Hey guys, welcome back to the New England Scrapper. So, today I've got a video for you guys on batteries. Now, generally, when you're scrapping, there's there's usually two different types of batteries you're going to come across. Obviously, you're going to, you know, come across outliers like your double A's and triple A's and stuff like that, alkaline batteries. You're going to find those. But the two that you are going to make money on, hopefully, are lead acid batteries and lithium ion batteries. Lead acid batteries, pretty straightforward car batteries, uh, those little UP, uh, is it UPS batteries, or UPC, I don't know, no, UPC is the company, UP, yeah, universal power supply, I don't know, the backup power supplies that have those big lead acid batteries in them, you might get one to like four in each, depending on the size, those are generally fairly safe from what I'm finding. There's not usually that much of a hazard to those. I do recommend that you get them out as soon as you get, you know, as soon as you get them in, providing the prices are good. But that's not the focus of today's video. The focus of today's video is lithium ion batteries. So I'm not gonna go into too much of what lithium ion batteries are made of, because that's not really important. Obviously, there's lithium, uh, I think there's some cadmium in there, maybe cobalt, uh, maybe nickel, and a few others. But Mo <clears throat> uh, electric cars are powered by them, cell phones, your laptops, all that stuff, that's all lithium ion battery technology. So there's old ones, there's new ones, and if you're doing e-waste or getting into it, you're going to come across them. Now I get a lot of Apple ones, as you can see over here, this is how I generally get them from my, my Apple recycler. They come in big big bins and this is this is a very heavy bin I I can barely lift it it's got to be it's got to be close to a hundred pounds if not a little more because it's it's pretty he it's heavier than an 80 pound quick creep bag now generally I will use gloves when holding these and I don't really want to mess around with them too much but today's video is on these because if you don't know about them you really should uh, there are some safety hazards and safety precautions that we're gonna go over in a little bit but I figure let's start getting into uh, into what they look like and where you're gonna find them and then I'll go over pricing and safety precautions after so the first kind that you're gonna get a decent amount of is just regular laptop batteries Windows machines Dell stuff a lot, these are gonna be the probably the most strange looking they come in a million different million different types I mean all of these here are laptop batteries removable ones some are a little more square others are a lot longer some are perfectly rectangular others are not but generally somewhere on it they will say uh, lion or lithium ion and don't throw in the trash you know there's the don't throw in the trash which is on every battery but especially these and I'll explain why um, <clears throat> some older Macs might have a Mac rechargeable one like this, which this one actually, uh, this one opened up a little bit. The cells are swelling just a tiny bit, so I'd like to, I'd really like to get these sold soon. Now, these ones, I'm not quite sure what they came out of, but you can, you can see the cells. I mean, it's obviously some type of laptop, but again, these all came, you know, pre-removed out of the device. From my Apple repair guy. Here's another another way they come with a metal backing plate. This one here is just some random rechargeable lithium ion battery. I assume it came out of a computer. Looks like it, but I'm not quite sure. I just got that one as is. I didn't take it out of anything. These again, I'm pretty sure these ones here came out of Came out of laptops. Same here with another uh, another strange looking one. But those are the those are probably the most common ones you're gonna find. If you happen to do cell phones, you might find ones like these, which would be in an Apple. Something like this, and like an iPhone 5 or 7, 8, I don't know. I think that one might have come out of a I'm not sure what it came out of. I don't think I took that one out. But some might look like this, but they should all say on them somewhere, lithium ion. Yeah, I don't know if the camera's going to...
going to focus or not. Lithium ion polymer. So, most of them, yeah, I don't think it's going to focus, but they will say lithium ion on it. This one here probably came out of some type of track phone. This is what's, this is the kind of battery that's in my, my LG phone, so. Again, another lithium ion battery. And a couple more that might sneak by you. Like this one here. This is an Energizer, what, AA? It's actually a lithium ion battery. It's, so it's a rechargeable. So if they are rechargeable, they might be worth looking into because they might be lithium ion. Same with this one here. Again, I don't know if it's going to focus. No, it's not going to, but it says lithium battery on it. And two more that surprised me. These came off of motherboards. I forget where. Most of these are NICAD batteries, I believe, but these ones here actually say lithium on it. So it is worth checking checking those batteries you pop off your boards because they might be lithium ion. Now, the important stuff, which is kind of the reason why I made the video. So lithium ion batteries are a little more dangerous, a lot more dangerous than lead acid batteries. As I said before, from what I understand, lead acid batteries are fairly stable. They shouldn't, you know, go up or really cause many issues as long as you know you don't dump them in, I don't know, a bucket of acid and store them in a bucket of acid. You should be okay. But just generally dry storing them, you'll be fine. These ones you might want to be a little bit more careful with because they can, they're more unstable. Uh, if you puncture a cell, I haven't done it yet, but I have, I know people who have toasted laptops because they punctured a cell and a nice big flame came right out of the top of them when trying to take some of these out. So be very careful. Uh, currently I'm storing mine in a metal bucket away from buildings away from, you know, a lot of combustible stuff. So if for whatever reason it were to go up, even though it probably would end up, you know, melting through the bucket, at least it's away from the house, it's away from the shop, so it's not, well, not the shop, but my breakdown station. So if anything were to happen, shouldn't be as much of an issue as if I had stored it with the rest of my stuff. So it is something to be careful. If you can store it in some type of airtight container, I would some type of airtight metal container away from your stuff. Uh, I don't profess to be, you know, a chemist. I'm not a chemist. I don't know. You know I'm not. I don't know a bunch about how the chemical stuff works and what makes it explode and what doesn't. One thing I do know is that when these combust, they actually some chemical thing either creates oxygen or there's already oxygen in it, so regular water won't douse it. So if one of these were to go up, you can't really, you can't just throw a cup of water on it and be done. You have to, like, completely smother it in water. And it's best just to call the fire department if something were to happen. Now, if a chemist tells you anything other than what I'm telling you, then please go ahead and listen to them, because it's probably better advice. <laughs> but, you know, I just kind of figured it's one of those things that people are going to start coming across something you should know something about so I figure I'll pass on the knowledge I have and obviously if I you know find out more profound knowledge I will I will make an update to this but this is kind of a where you're gonna find them maybe how to store them maybe not that's the kind of thing that you should really do your own research on uh, so don't take my word on the storage side do your own research I did mine and I've done the best I can right now with what I've found online. Again, these are the kind of thing I try to get in and out really quickly. And the one last part I do want to touch on before I end the video is you got to make sure you know where you're going to get rid of them. Because you don't want these sitting around for a long time. I mean, this bucket here is going to go in my big bucket. As soon as that's full, I really want to get it out. So, yeah, I mean, some of these are a little little bent. I don't think any of them have blown up yet, but I don't know. I don't really want to take many risks. Yeah, anyways. <clears throat> you need to figure out where you're going to get rid of them. So, for me, my board buyer will buy them at... I forget what I got. 
I got a decent rate, so I got a decent amount of money for them. So when my big bucket fills up, it's going to be a couple hundred pounds. So hoping for a couple hundred bucks, but we'll see. <laughs> You know, if it's two, three hundred pounds, I don't know, I might get 150 bucks. One to 150. But that's not the important part. The important part is you need to make sure you've got a place to get rid of them. Because some board buyers will buy them. Some e-waste recyclers will buy them. Scrapyards generally do not buy them. There may be outliers, but I have yet to go to a scrapyard that will buy lithium-ion batteries. 99% of the time you can sell car batteries to scrapyards, but lithium ion batteries are a lot harder to a lot harder to get off and to sell. So if you don't have a buyer for them, you need to uh, you need to either go to your town dump or a hazardous waste day or something like that or somewhere around you that will take you know will take them and dispose of them carefully. I, I cannot stress enough, do not throw them in the trash. Very bad things will happen. So, one place you used to be able to get rid of them uh, was BoardSort.com. However, last time I checked, and I am going to pull up the... Uh, I am going to pull up the website here real quick. I have sold them to BoardSort.com, and the way that they want The way that they want them, if you... When I sold them, is I want you to tape these contacts. And to be honest, that's really not a bad storage tip. I guess I should have mentioned that in the beginning. If you, uh, if you want to store them, taping those contacts really isn't a terrible idea. Just to, you know, mitigate risk again. And also, if you are shipping them through the mail, I believe you need to have a special sticker on them. So that is something to look into. I'm pretty sure you need to be a part of a special program or pay extra money, I don't know, to get some sort of, you know, either hazardous material sticker or, as far as I'm aware, you can, uh, you can sell them, uh, or not sell them, send them through the mail, but you have to do a bunch of special stuff, so that is something to keep in mind if you are going to ship them somewhere. And again, they are heavy, so some sort of flat rate box is probably going to work best for you. So when I was... When I was selling the board sort last, I was getting about 50, 50 cents a pound for lithium ion batteries, but things have obviously changed. I don't know what the deal is, but it doesn't look like uh, Chris really wants to deal with them anymore. Because what I'm getting right now, if you look here, we got lithium ion battery, uh, laptop battery, no tape, no swelling, minus uh, 50 cents a pound. So he will charge you. 50 cents a pound for those. Uh, lithium ion cell battery, no tape, no swelling. Uh, again, negative 50 cents a pound. Lithium ion battery taped, no swelling. Zero dollars and zero cents a pound, so he won't charge you anything, but he won't give you anything for him. Uh, taped lead acid battery, 10 cents a pound. That's actually pretty terrible, but lead acid batteries haven't been worth much recently, anyways. So I don't think it's just him. Then the taped uh, cell battery, no swelling, zero dollars, zero cents. So yeah, one thing, if you do send them to board sort, do not send them with swelling. As far as I'm aware, my buyer hasn't said anything to me about batteries that have started to swell at all. And I think the reason that it's worth less to to board sort is because I don't know, it's either a safety hazard or I, I'm not 100% sure but I do remember I couldn't send any swollen batteries uh, I don't think I have any real swollen cell ones on hand do I probably I know I've got a few laying around but I really don't want to go digging for them I mean you can tell they really they really puff up and I mean, you can you can feel the swelling yeah, I don't think any of these are really swelling at all, so I'm not going to go digging. But yeah, that, that is another thing to uh, keep in mind. If any of the batteries do happen to swell, will your buyer take them? Or will you have to take them somewhere else to get them specially disposed of? For me, as far as I'm aware, I can just throw them all in one big bin and get paid for them, and that's kind of the end of it. So... 
Not a super long video, but hopefully it's fairly informative to those of you that wanted to know some stuff about lithium-ion batteries. So, thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Keep, uh, keep on scrapping. Bye for now. There we go.